A lot is happening in Linux and open source, and one of the major things is the Rust language becoming more and more apparent in the Linux kernel ecosystem. So we're going to be talking today about how Rust is making the rounds and certain distributions, the kernel itself with new drivers and updates, including becoming part of the core utilities and Ubuntu even going towards using it fully on their Linux distribution. There's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. One of the biggest announcements this week was hard Rust requirements from May onward from Debian. This is very interesting. As a longtime Debian developer announced plans to start adding Rust code and dependencies to apt, the Debian package manager, with the goal of setting it no earlier than May 2026. The goal here is to make parts of apt like .deb and .tar parsing and HTTP signature verification more secure and reliable through quote unquote memory safe Rust. So what does this mean for developers? Developers maintaining Debian ports must now ensure that Rust works on their platform within the next six months or completely drop support, which is wild. As this plan to introduce hard Rust dependencies and Rust code into apt means that Debian is prioritizing using Rust in their code. The reasoning it's important for the project as a whole to be able to move forward and rely on modern tools and technologies and not be held back by trying to shoehorn modern software on retro computing devices. Thank you for your understanding. This is quite some big news because it does mark a technical shift here for a mostly conservative Linux distribution that tries to remain as stable as possible. And this will affect a lot of Linux distributions, including Ubuntu, Mint, Pop! OS, and many others that are derivatives of Debian. When something foundational, like the apt utility, is rewritten in a different language, it impacts millions of systems. And there's gonna be practical changes that, as we've seen with the core utilities, Rust implementation. We're gonna get into that with Ubuntu here in a moment, but there's definitely some worry here, not only moving over to Rust and walking away from stability of some of the C-based code, but also reproducibility and licensing control. As Rust's ecosystem relies on cargo and third-party crates, which aren't always GPL friendly. And this seems to be a wider trend across Linux. It's not just isolated here to Debian, although it is a surprise here that this Debian app rewrite is going to happen in Rust. And it definitely brings up a heavily polarized split of people defending C and traditional Linux coding versus Rust, who is trying to emphasize that they have better tooling and a more modern memory safe tool chain. As almost every single operating system today remains mostly built under the low level language C and has remained stable over decades and decades. It becomes a concern that just pushing everything into Rust will come with a lot of pain for end users. Either way, it's a very interesting move from Debian, but let's move on from Debian and talk about Ubuntu. With the announcement of carefully but purposefully oxidizing Ubuntu, Ubuntu's engineering lead made the announcement that they plan on replacing the core system utilities, think things like listing, copying, moving, everything that you use in the terminal basically, to the Rust-based version of the core utilities. We were using GNU C, but with Ubuntu 25.10, this actually has already happened. The goal was not speed claimed by the engineering lead, but safety, reliability, and resilience for modern development. Ubuntu would begin using the U utilities, core utilities, and sudo rs, which are the Rust implementations of the GNU core utilities and sudo, which the plan would align with Ubuntu's broader modernization effort called Engineering Ubuntu for the next 20 years. This marks signs for a transition to Rust-based core system tools and is very interesting because now we can see kind of how that played out. Did it come without any shortfalls? Well, spoiler alert, it did not. But this post here from Ubuntu, again, the VP of Engineering at Ubuntu, outlined a long-term vision for how Ubuntu plans to evolve over the next two decades. And the four key themes was communication, automation, process, and modernization. Basically, Ubuntu wants to modernize its foundations like the core utilities and its packaging systems. So it's interesting to see Debian actually focusing on the packaging system and Ubuntu focusing on the core utilities. I wonder if there's some crossover between the two communities at this point, trying to reinvent how the distribution is built, maintained, and communicated while using Rust code. So with those announcements, we did see sudo rs now being defaulted as the sudo of use in quest and quokka or 25.10 and what does that mean for users well it means that sudo rs is now the default sudo in ubuntu daily images upstream sudo rs team did a fantastic job to implement the necessary features in time for the 25.10 free freeze this release includes support for the 
Linux kernels less than 5.9, pseudo edit, support for no executable, and app armor profile switching along with various miscellaneous fixes, which overall we did not see a massive issue with this transition to using pseudo RS versus pseudo. But there are some features that are lacking. Pseudo RS still lacks the feature parity with traditional pseudo, sometimes dubbed pseudo WS, as there are some flags that are not supported in the new integration. As pseudo RS was not supporting ask pass, a flag, and other missing options, leading the VP of engineering saying, hey, that's a little unfortunate. I guess for now the cockpit package could be adjusted to depend on pseudo WS, which would allow app to solve this automatically for cockpit users. This came after a user using the cockpit package, which is a web-based Linux admin tool. And since pseudo RS doesn't support the dash A or the dash dash ask pass flag, cockpit failed to elevate privileges correctly and start. We did see how cockpit at least was broken due to pseudo RS. Regardless, the workaround there was for cockpit to depend on the old pseudo WS package. But the bigger deal from Ubuntu is the Ubuntu Rust Core Utilities Packet. Ubuntu has decided and has implemented now in 25.10 the Rust Core Utilities, as it's a big deal that the Utilities Core Utilities is using Rust now, as foundational tools are getting rewritten that are at the core of Unix style systems and that have been implemented and stable in C for decades. Moving to Rust is not a small replacement, it's really rewriting the foundation of the user experience, which could have a massive ripple effect onto scripts, automation, build systems, and there's a huge migration risk. That's why they're doing it with 25.10. We're gonna have to watch out for performance regressions, incompatibilities, and what happens when porting architecture support. Also, again, the licensing concerns are very real. The Rust Core Utilities, U Utilities, and GNU Core Utilities have different licenses, and that's a serious problem for a lot of users. Also, switching over to the Core Utilities did not come without its pain. Ubuntu 25.10 Quest in Quokka, the Rust Core Utilities date-r file returns wrong date. Well, you wouldn't think that would be that big of a deal, but it was a massive deal as it led to causing backup scripts to not run their backups because they think the backups are current and possible other mayhem. And this led into a critical mistake, the breakage of unintended upgrades as unintended upgrades stopped running entirely since the system thought there was no upgrades needed due to the date issue. We did see a fix for this, but users were left stranded for a little bit, at least in 25.10, in getting security updates through the automatic unintended upgrades script. It's quite wild what issues we can run into, especially, well, unintended issues, right? But this one has been solved and patched for 25.10. And the point of trying to do this all in 25.10 is so that the Rust core utilities are actually ready for the Ubuntu 26.04 long-term support edition. 25.10 is really an experimental ground, and that's why Ubuntu has chosen to use Rust in their core utilities in 25.10, trying to get through all these breakages before we get an official long-term support release, even though there was a major regression with the Rust rewrite of date. Overall, the transition has been fairly smooth to give Ubuntu and Rust some credit. But Ubuntu's move to developing with Rust is very interesting as they are pushing more and more Rust in the tool chain for development on Ubuntu. And they're even documenting Rust as an official language to develop with now on Ubuntu with the release of their own documentation on how to approach things with Rust. So clearly there's no slowdown with Rust and Rust actually appears now before develop with GCC. Whether that's intentional or not, maybe I'm looking into it a little bit too much, but it is kind of funny. And that's all great as distributions like Debian and Ubuntu, which do pave the way for a lot of Linux distributions, and clearly they're pushing Rust on us. But that's not the only place Rust is being pushed. We're gonna check out a bunch of new Linux drivers and kernel patches that have been submitted over the months that also include Rust. Don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Let's get into how the Linux kernel itself is changing with more and more Rust introduction into it. So here's a big one, the Rust binder driver lands in Linux. Google and kernel maintainers have officially rewritten Android's binder IPC driver in Rust, and this just got merged into Linux. Binder is a core component of Android. It's Android's process to process communication system. Every app, service, and permission depends on it, and it shows how drivers, even in Android, are being rewritten in Rust, mainly to improve maintenance, but this is while as a foundational Linux IPC or inter-process communication system has been rewritten in Rust. They claim that Binder has been evolving over the past 15 years, 
to meet the evolving needs of Android. Its responsibilities, expectations, and complexity have grown considerably during that time. While we expect Binder to continue to evolve with Android, there are a number of factors that currently constrain the ability to develop and maintain it. Briefly, those are complexity, improvements that need to be made, security, and that's why they wanted to make a change to Rust because it seems like everybody's trying to rewrite things in Rust. Not sure whether or not that's to do with complexity or just people feeling like they want to start over in projects as they've become too complex. Regardless, that is a big rewrite for Linux and Android. And recently, Linus did have some issues with the Rust formatting tool in Linux, not liking the way that we actually format things out, aka people had been adding multiple crates on multiple lines, and when he tried to turn them into something more readable, like a structured use crate, well, the Rust formatting tool messed that up and created garbage, or what Linus calls bass backwards garbage, in which it suggested a completely one-liner code, which is very hard to read when comparing files in diff and called it a problem, possibly because of this horrendous Rust format, random heuristic behavior signed off Linus. So we did see a new merge to fix the Rust, Rust format tool. And by default now, formats import in a way that is prone to conflicts while merging and rebasing, since in some cases it condenses several items into the same line. So we fix that and then document in our guidelines that we will handle this for the moment with trailing empty comment workaround and make the tree Rust format clean again. So we are seeing multiple improvements in not only new Rust code, but how the formatting and the tool chains behave. There's a clear push to trying to make Rust tooling better in Linux and the formatting to follow through with Linus's requests on how to actually write and maintain clean code in the kernel as he's been doing it for decades and understands exactly what is needed. So he's pushing Rust along as well and allowing Rust code to be merged into the Linux kernel. And the Rust for Linux project recently updated their Rust version policy and claims that they have supported tool chains now for kernel developers using the following distributions. Arch Linux, Debian Testing and Unstable, Fedora Linux, Gen2, Linux, Nix, OpenSUSE, and Ubuntu long-term support. This is a big deal for Linux and Rust. It shows that the Rust for Linux project is integrating itself more and more into Linux distributions and trying to get developers to focus on building, their, building tools with Rust. As we keep seeing more and more Rust tools in Linux, kernel 6.18 has seen major Rust updates. As the Rust for Linux project continues to try to polish, stabilize, and deepen Rust integration into the kernel's foundation. Another round of Rust support was made. It's called a small one this time, but the Rust infrastructure and tool chain keeps getting updated. Even though this is small refinement, focus patches, Rust is getting deeper and deeper into the Linux kernel core with things like the Rust for Linux project constantly pushing this forwards. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and my map, all available at SavvyNick.com. So here's another big one, driver core changes. The driver core is the central subsystem in the Linux kernel that manages devices and drivers. It's basically the glue between hardware and the rest of the kernel. It allows you to do things like discover hardware devices, bind them to the right drivers, hot plug and power management. It exposes devices to the proper user space locations and manages common objects like structures and the device model tree. So an update to the driver core in Linux is a big deal as a lot of subsystems are now able to allow for managing hardware devices and drivers, and this helps abstract the discovery, binding, and management for every piece of hardware. So Rust gaining access to the driver core means that Rust can now power Linux hardware drivers more safely. So this was a pretty big patch released recently as well. Again, pushing towards how Rust is being implemented into more and more drivers and is sitting at the core of Linux at this point. And then another big one is we've written Rust Atomic Changes for Linux Kernel 6.18 as well, as it finally adds in a complete Rust Atomic API, which can now help Rust use concurrency with the same memory model as Atomic primitives used by C. This basically adds the ability for Rust and C to use the same memory model and work together with memory. This also helps allow Rust to run concurrent code better with finer control, but what's important here, Rust and C can now use the same memory model when communicating with each other. It's a big deal and a big patch. All of these things have been happening over the last few months and a lot for Linux kernel 6.18. Over a year ago, 
we didn't have that much Rust implementation as we were just slowly getting the parts and pieces together, really documenting things and how we should approach pulling C and Rust code together with the tool chains. But now we're seeing real improvements to the infrastructure behind the operating system, which is the Linux kernel and seeing real updates and movement towards Rust. It's interesting. And the Linux kernel isn't the only place we're seeing Rust. Cosmic is what's called by System76, foundational software for designing a beautiful user experience. You use it on your favorite distribution, which is a new desktop environment written completely in Rust. It's been developed for years at this point, reaching beta recently, and there's an official date now for the Rust Cosmic desktop release. And this new desktop environment built entirely on Rust and designed natively for Wayland is yet another way how Linux is maturing with Rust at its core. Not only is the kernel implementing Rust code at this point, but we have desktop environments 100% being developed, ground up from Rust. So it is a big change happening in Linux using Rust at the core of many of the tools and experiences that we use in order to drive our operating systems. Whether you like it or not, there is Rust being implemented. There is a big discussion to be made, at least about how licensing will work together as we see more and more Rust code being baked in to our Linux operating systems. Here's the official post by the CEO, Carl Rochelle at System76, claiming that Pop OS 24.04 long-term support and Cosmic Epic One will be released December 11th, 2025. Future Pop OS releases starting with Pop OS 26.04. 04 LTS will now align with the Ubuntu long-term support release timing approximately two weeks after the Ubuntu release date. This would mean Pop! OS would be seeing the core utilities upgrade to Rust, a fully Rust-based desktop environment, and pseudo RS also built in and baked in. That's a big deal as System76 seems to be one of the major contributors paving the path towards using Rust in Linux modern desktop experiences, the operating system itself, We'll see how all that pans out. Wishing the best of luck to everyone over there. And this all comes after the Steam hardware survey for October 2025, where Linux finally reaches a milestone. This could very well be because of the Windows 10 end of life, where Linux just reached a monumental milestone, reaching 3% of surveyed users using Linux basically to game. That's a big deal. Almost half point change in the last month in people using Linux across many different distributions. Linux is becoming more and more popular in gaming, in productivity, and in many other use cases. And Rust is becoming more and more baked into the core. I want to know what you think about all the Rust code dependencies now being introduced into Linux and the Linux kernel. What do we think about Debian making hard Rust requirements, Ubuntu introducing more and more tooling, Based on Rust, the kernel adding more and more drivers. Is Rust actually taking over Linux? Is this good or bad? Love to hear from you in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.